Tesla, the world's most valuable automaker, released fourth quarter 2022 delivery figures that missed Wall Street and the company's own estimates. Arise Business Correspondent Rutu Sudiri looked at what this means for stock price and the brand to Tesla's die-hard fans. Here's his report. 2023 has kicked off with a fourth quarter production and sales release from the most valuable automobile company in the world, Tesla. Elon Musk's publicly traded electric vehicle firm on Monday, January the 2nd, released its fourth quarter 2022 production and delivery numbers to eager anticipation. The results were mixed. Tesla said Monday it had delivered 1.31 million electric vehicles in 2022, a record for the company and a 40% increase compared to 2021, but the numbers still fell short of expectations. One of the expectations the figures fell short of came from Tesla itself. The company set a long-term goal of raising its deliveries by 50% a year on average. Tesla has regularly applied a caveat to that target by saying the 50% goal may fluctuate based on operations. Here's an excerpt from its press release which accompanied its fourth quarter numbers which said, Thank you to all our customers, employees, suppliers, shareholders, and supporters who helped us achieve a great 2022 in light of significant COVID and supply chain related challenges throughout the year. Production was suspended at its Shanghai plant for several weeks during the course of last year due to COVID restrictions. Another set of expectations its delivery numbers didn't meet was Wall Street. Fourth quarter 2022 deliveries of 405,278 missed Wall Street estimates of 431,117. Back in December of 2022, ahead of its fourth quarter delivery numbers release, Tesla attempted to juice its sales with the discounts. In early December, the company offered Model 3 and Model Y buyers in the United States a $3,750 credit if they have their vehicle delivered in December 2022. Later in the same month, the company increased the discount to $7,500. Investors didn't react warmly to the move. Maiwa Ige, senior associate with Financial Derivatives Company Limited, explained why. The company offers discounts for a variety of reasons. One, it could be to attract um, new customers. It could be to build even stronger relationship with your existing clients. Yeah. It could be to increase your sales volume. It could be to meet sales targets set for the year. Variety of reasons. But for Tesla, in this case, right, um, their concerns that, like I said, it, ha would have, it has to do with declining demand, right? And so this has actually made investors very wary. Mm -hmm. On December 1, they announced a credit of $3,500. Yeah. for the Model 3 and Y, right? And on Wednesday, the less than a month after, they've doubled it to right. 7,500. Right. And in addition to that, they're also offering free um, free supercharging fee of, uh, free supercharging fee for every 10,000 miles for vehicles delivered in um, December. So yeah. investors have taken this as a sign that they're having issues with demand already. We've heard um, stories that they're producing more than they're selling, right. that their delivery times have reduced mm. and that some of their plants are running at under capacity and all of this. So this is um, making investors really concerned. Tesla stock was one of the worst performers in 2022 on the Nasdaq, falling by 65%. Elon Musk in 2022 became the first person in history to lose $200 billion of his net worth, mostly because of his Tesla shares record fall. So does that make Tesla stock attractive? Should you buy the stock at this level? FTC's senior associate Mayo Ige has an answer. So the thing like with 
the tiny stock, there's the general rule think of I guess about Warren Buffett buy the dip. Right. It's, it's the stock price has declined, right? So there's that thought, of, oh yes, you can buy the dip. But the thing is, you have to have, be financially savvy, consult a financial advisor to know, to check the fundamentals, technical um, analysis, fundamental analysis, to know um, the standing of a company. But then if you're going to buy the dip for Tesla, I would say you, you should be looking to hold long term. Yeah. Don't expect any immediate returns in the short term. As far as turning the stock price around in 2023, editor-at-large in Yahoo Finance anchor Brian Sozi has some suggestions. 1. A board of directors changes with some more experienced around tech and electric vehicle leadership. Two members of Tesla's board of directors come to mind. One. Elon Musk's brother, Kimball Musk, who's a South African restaurateur. Two, James Murdoch, son of media mogul Rupert Murdoch. Neither Kimball nor James have much experience in electric vehicles, leading for some analysts to suggest they should be replaced on the board. Two, announce a major stock buyback program. Brian Sozi says this will do a lot for the confidence of the market in Tesla stock with the added point of the low levels in the stock price. Tesla has almost $20 billion in cash, so they have the firepower, according to Sozi. Three, more financial metrics and transparency around the margin structure. Brian Sozi says analysts want more transparency behind what's driving Tesla's gross profit margin and operating margins as the company ramps up production with more gigafactories around the world. For Tesla owners, many of them don't care what the stock price is. The company has a strong, almost cult-like following with different Tesla communities around the world. One of them, we just discovered, is blackgirlswithteslas.com. Yes, that's right. A community exclusively for black women who own Teslas. They call themselves the Tessie tribe and sell all types of merchandise on the website from clothing to bags to phone accessories. Tesla is so popular we even discovered one in Lagos, Nigeria. Think about that. An electric vehicle in a country with unstable electricity. That is some serious brand power. Next up for Tesla, the company plans to host its investor day on March the 1st, 2023 and live stream the event from its Gigafactory in Texas when it will discuss long-term plans for expansion and capital allocation. Before March 1st, the company will release its financial results for the fourth quarter 2022 and full year ended December 31st, 2022 after the market closes on Wednesday, January the 25th, 2023. All eyes will be on those numbers from the most valuable auto company in the world. Rhoda Sodiri, Arise News. All eyes on Tesla. Thank you, Rotus, for that update. Now, for Global Business Update, Michael Wilson joins us now from Cape Town, South Africa. Good morning, Michael. Morning. A uh, fairly mixed start to uh, 2023 as far as uh, the Far East is concerned. Hong Kong up very, very slightly. Shanghai Composite up about half a percent too. Um, basically, the PMI figures, the private PMI figures out of the out of China have in fact declined, much as you'd expect factory activity declining because of the COVID lockdown there. However, it is of course emerging from that. How quickly we do not know. The Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, uh, raising its inflation forecast to about two percent, which takes its sort of into the range of its uh, central bank remit. Singapore, let me take you there, um, gets the thumbs up from uh investors or venture capitalists at least a lot of the companies there which are involved in high-tech development are at the, the kind of stage which is attracting a lot of private um, private private investment and uh, that's looking uh, that's that's looking very favorable as is the GDP of Singapore the, the nation state uh, there which is up 3.8 percent which is exceeding its official forecast and um, we were talking yesterday briefly about Brazil um, I can tell you now that uh, that Lula the new president there uh, Luiz Inácio Lula de Silva um, is that has actually putting a curb not only on gun law and the rest of it but more importantly as far as economists are concerned um, about privatization uh, the national post office um, the national energy company Petrobras and he's also 
uh, including is, is also putting curbs on tax breaks for large companies as well. So privatisation is effectively being halted in Brazil and much more em emphasis on public sector spending. As far as the United States is concerned, this is the first trading day today. US futures um, fell and then rose again. So it's all fairly mixed, really, ahead of the first trading day. You know, the normal kind of things apply to that. People are still worried about inflation. That's seen as a, a major a major headwind. We get um, PMIs today, and uh, the uh, today we get first and second quarters of, uh, of S and P uh, globals. Look at the global economy, and of course we get the job openings on uh, Wednesday, and then the real big um, FOM, the, the real big uh, non-farm payrolls report on Friday, which happens to be the meeting before um, February the first, which is when uh, the FOM meets to decide on interest rate policy at the beginning of February. You've heard a lot about for, for, from Rotus. I just want to reiterate a little bit about Tesla. 1.3 million deliveries uh, in 2022. That was shy of what Wall Street expected. Um, and also, uh, they're hoping to get by on steep price cuts as well. But the shares have lost 45% um, over the year. Whether or not it's a good investment, I'm not qualified to, to say those kind of things. I'll leave it to you. But that's where the share price is uh, right now. As far as Euro European shares concerned, they, they opened quite well yesterday. 2023 starting fairly upbeat. Uh, London and Dublin closed. They opened today, um, if people can actually get to work. Um, the, the data suggested that uh, that the worst has now passed. Um, automobile uh, sector up 3.2%. Luxury goods doing quite well at 2% as well, um, as far as their increase is concerned. Um, the EU is offering COVID vaccines to China, uh, part of the part of the Brussels uh, um, initiative that, that you know we don't, we don't want. Um, China bringing its its COVID infections over to uh, over to, over to Europe as well. Um, they're feeling that uh, Sinovac and uh, and uh, Sinopharm have not been good enough. Those are the domestic China drugs and the EU is offering its own there. Um, the EU is also looking at Italy as being one of the, one of the uh, Eurozone's weakest links. Um, their public debt is 145% of GDP at the moment and no question that the ECB is going to raise interest rates. It said as much last week and they're going to be half a percent increases and the worry is that Italy may have to default. As far as the UK is concerned, I mentioned the difficulty about people getting to work. The train strikes continue. Um, there is a real doubt as to whether the nation will actually be getting back to work or not. Um, network Rail, which runs the track and the signals and the rest of it is saying that about 20 percent of rail services will actually run but workers are being told do not travel unless it's absolutely necessary um uk as well no estimate um still for the pandemic employment scheme this is called kickstart and this was applying to to, to young people aged between 16 and 24 who might well have um, come out of or been unemployed during the during the pandemic um the, the 163 um jobs were actually created, 160,000 jobs were actually created. The expectation there would be a quarter of a million, 250,000, that didn't happen. But nobody knows how much this has actually cost and how many companies actually falsely claimed. And finally, as far as commodities are concerned, um, oil and gas at pre-war uh, levels right now. There are fears that, uh, well, the normal kind of things I've been talking about yesterday, basically, uh, whether, whether, when, whether and when uh, China will rejoin again and start consuming oil uh, again and uh, the, the oil market though is well below its 55 uh, day moving average. Now this might sound very technical but all it is is what it says it's a 55 day moving average and it's below that right now. Um, any kind of tightening and the, the price will rise fairly rapidly but at the moment relatively volatile. That's the global view. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, so does that mean there's going to be a glut at some point and with this benchmarks they're setting for Russia is it a way to push Russia out or things are probably going to change if China comes on stream in the new year? Because I saw other predictions that said the prices you know, could hover around over $89 per barrel this year. I mean, I keep saying in the new year, it's this year. And secondly, isn't it just obvious that uh, Elon Musk has missed his path and you should just go back and face Tesla rather than keep rummaging through Twitter and making himself um, a chief international laughingstock? Uh, I mean, if, if, 
I think investors, um, whatever you think about where the share price is right now, would rather like a proper CEO at Tesla and somebody who is actually um, devoting the majority of their time towards that because it's certainly not out of the woods yet. I mean, the deliveries weren't bad, but they, they, they underperformed, as Rotus was saying, and I was adding to that as well, over, over, underperformed what Wall Street actually wanted. And I, I still don't feel as though, I mean, again, Rotus was talking about how they're juicing up um, the share prices so of our offering cheap models well i think until they get real price cuts and also you get a big um ele electric infrastructure the, the shares will struggle shares have been struggling in the united states shares have been struggling uh, sorry sales have been struggling in the united states and sales have been struggling in europe as well so i think tesla's got um a, a, a long way to go uh, but i think as you say that uh, it would be much better if elon musk were to maybe concentrate his efforts on one company at a time and as far as tesla investors are concerned it's tesla i've got no idea what's happening at Twitter and I'm guessing that no, nobody else has either. Um, as far as oil's concerned, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, who knows, who knows where it's going. It, it's too, the, the, the market is too tight to, to predict right now. It, it, you're certainly right about Russia, but Russia will always find markets for its cheaper oil. It's a question of whether those revenues will keep the Russian economy going and well, what, can we triangulate those kind of figures? I doubt it very much indeed. Thanks, Michael. Now let's look at the South American country, Brazil. It was President Lula da Silva's first full day in office and the Brazilian market has responded negatively. Markets are said to have slumped um, following his pledge to social issues, to prioritizing social issues, and also to further extend the fuel tax exemption. What do you think in the next few days, weeks, uh, will, in terms of his decisions, how will that play out in Brazil? I think I, I don't think anything will change there, quite honestly. I mean, it's entirely, entirely predictable that, uh, that Lula would prevent or would curb the privatisation of Petrobras and also the, the, uh, the, the National Postal Service as well. And he's also cutting tax breaks for big companies, all of which were promised under the previous administration. Will, can Brazil actually um, revive itself through a great increase in public spending? I think investors probably will be the test. That it won't be in the next couple of days. It certainly will be in the next couple of weeks when investors actually look at that and wonder whether or not the, 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 the GDP of the company is going to um, support the kind of debt levels, which will no doubt come. So I, I prefer to keep my powder dry as far as that's question is concerned. But uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, the, the, it will be investors who will be looking at the increase in public spending and whether or not the economy in Brazil can actually afford it or Okay, quickly. In Brazil, the analysts uh, are saying this morning that the signals are bad because, uh, um, you know, President Lula is saying that he wants the state to take more control of, uh, you know, the economic growth in that country and then to uh, hand over power to the poor. And he has introduced uh, a series of, uh, you know, measures that have affected uh, Petrobras, Petrobras, uh, you know, shares, for example, slumped uh, within the last uh, uh, 24 hours. But I wanted to talk about Tesla. Now, Tesla, the uh, biggest news coming out is that uh, Elon Musk, perhaps in reaction to criticisms, has now appointed a gentleman called Tom Zhu as uh, more or less his number two person, the person with the highest profile after Elon Musk, to take charge of uh, the global operations of a Tesla. Uh, do you think that that will make any difference? What kind of man is Tom Zhu? He had been in charge of uh, US operations of the company. Now he's going to combine that with operations in Asia, in Europe, and elsewhere. And uh, you, you know the main criticism against uh, uh, Elon Musk is that he was concentrating too much on Twitter. And because of that, he was not paying enough attention to the electric vehicle company, whose shares dropped 11% at the beginning of December, 44% uh, by end of December, 68 to 70% the whole year. So the future of Tesla probably depends on how, you know, this new man who has been given an expanded role uh, would uh, play out. But the main question that I want to ask is about UK recession. The papers are reporting this morning that the UK is going to face the deepest and worst recession among the G7 countries, and that households in the UK uh, will have to pay a heavy price for, Financial Times is reporting, for government's failures, policy failures. 
What are those policy failures in your view? Well, I think uh, the, the question really is how deep the recession is actually going to be. It may be relatively shallow. We simply don't know at the moment. Uh, and I mean, day by day, the strike situation appears to be getting worse. The government's, the government's digging in and people will simply probably not be able to go to work today. Um, at least that with the amount of 20% um, of, of the rail services, that's all that's actually being provided, whether or not, I mean, ministers are warning about the future of the rail industry. When you, when you start talking about the infrastructure of a country, if a country failing like that, then I think you have to take it relatively seriously. Now, neither of these sides is actually getting together. The unions are blaming the government. The government is saying to the rail operators, you need to talk to the unions. And so it goes round and round and round. And I don't think anybody at the moment um, is getting is getting near a negotiating table until that actually happens I think it's it, you know I mean, the, 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 the IMF whoever it is the G7 it doesn't matter who it is I mean we know that, that things are going to be fairly difficult we know that um, we know there's going to be some kind of recession. I did, however, quote to you uh, before Christmas uh, the, 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 uh, the, the looking forward of the various large companies within the UK who were saying that they were continuing business investment. We haven't had the most recent PMIs. So I think, I think the picture is far too complicated to draw simple lines over it, like, you know, there is going to be a recession. Yeah, we all know that. It's not the point, is it? The question is, what, how will the cost of living buy and how deep will that actual recession be and we simply do not know the answer to those questions at the moment so there whilst your concerns are probably um, echoed as far as most people in the UK are concerned uh, and, and certainly the worst as far as G7 is concerned um, a those companies have not had those countries have not had to cope uh, with with the kind of um, problems that are happening at the moment and the and the, 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 the only measure about the UK is how deep is that recession is going to be that that's the real question well, thank you very much, Michael.